In this video, we will solve a variety of problems involving sine, cosine, and tangent. So, these are the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. You need to know them. They all apply to a right triangle. In a right triangle, across from the 90 degree angle is always the hypotenuse. These other two words depend on which angle you choose. If we look at angle theta here, the leg that's right next to it is the adjacent leg, and the leg that is across from it is the opposite leg. So then we have sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. This can be abbreviated using the magical word SOKOTOA, where the SO part stands for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, and the CA cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse and of course toa tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent okay for problem number one they're asking us to find the sine of u they're not asking us for to find angle u just the sine of u uh, so they're talking about angle u so you should circle angle u. Now we label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle you circled is the opposite uh, leg. And right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. Now sine of an angle is, um, well, well, remember Sokotoa. This reminds us that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So um, opposite over hypotenuse, that would be 30 over 34. Now this can be reduced. Both of these are divisible by 2. So this would be 15 over 17. So the answer to number 1 would be C. OK. What about the tangent of angle S? So right away, they mention angle S, so let's circle that. Now let's label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. Across from angle S is the opposite leg. And right next to angle S is the adjacent leg. Now think about Sokotoa. Okay, they're asking us for tangent, so that's uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be 16 over 30. This can be reduced. Both of these are even, so half of 16 is 8, half of 30 is 15. So 8 over 15. So that is going to be angle D. Okay. Um, problem number three. Now, before we do problem number three, um, let me just remind you, well, three and four sort of go together. Let me remind you of uh, just a rule that we learned. When you have two complementary angles, like P and Q, all right, we're told those are complementary. That means they add up to 90. So P plus Q equals 90. That's true. Um, that also means that P and Q could be uh, the acute angles in a right triangle, like maybe this would be P and this would be Q. Anyway, if you have complementary angles, here's the first pattern. Um, the cosine of one angle is always equal to the sine of the other angle. Right? And I could have said it the other way too. I could have said the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of the other angle. So, for example, if I told you that the cosine of angle P um, was, I don't know, two-thirds, then that means that the sine of angle Q is also two-thirds. Those would be the same. Okay? Um, now, we, we don't have to deal only with variables. We could use numbers. 
um, let's say angle P was 40 degrees, then these are complementary. So that means angle Q would have to be, whoops, not 90. <laughs> angle Q would have to be 50 degrees. Had to erase my whole triangle, didn't you? Okay, if one angle is 40 degrees, the other angle would be 50 degrees, right? That makes them add up to 90. So this whole thing would work the same way. Um, the cosine of 40 should equal the sine of 50. Or the sine of 40 should equal the cosine of 50. All right, so that's one rule that we've learned about complementary angles. Now, here's the other rule that we've learned about complementary angles. All right, this, this one is the, uh, the tangent rule. Um, let's say the tangent of one angle is 2 thirds. Then the tangent of the other angle is going to be 3 over 2. Um, so they're going to be reciprocals of each other. All right, the tangent of one angle is going to be the reciprocal of the tangent of the other angle. Reciprocal means the fraction is like upside down. So that's the other rule. Okay, and by the way, look, that would work again with uh, numbers as well. If I told you that the tangent of 40 um, was 3 sevenths, and then I asked you what about the tangent of 50, well, that would be 7 over 3. Okay, because 40 and 50 are automatically complementary because they add up to 90. All right, now we're ready to answer problems three and four. Um, so complementary angles, we're talking about tangent. So that means we're going to use the tangent rule I just showed you. All right, so if the tangent of P is equal to 5 over 8, that means the tangent of Q will equal 8 over 5. Okay, so that's why the answer is A. Okay, now, um, number four, again, uh, they, they, they didn't give us two angles, and they didn't tell us they were complementary, but they gave us a number. So we can figure out what the complementary angle is. Okay, so, for example, if I just draw this triangle, if I know that one angle is 15 degrees, I can find out the complementary angle by subtracting from 90. Okay, so if I go 90 minus 15, that's going to be the complementary angle. Okay, so the other angle would be 75. So we can use those patterns I was just talking about. Um, so the cosine of 15 should equal the sine of 75. Okay, so that's the answer right there. The answer is D. Um, but just to continue, I could have also said the sine of 15 should equal the cosine of 75. Okay, that's the other rule that we uh, learned about. All right, solving this equation. When the variable is in the denominator, you swap these. So this would be x is equal to 4 over sine 42. So that's 4 over sine 42. That's 5.978. Okay, so that's going to be A. When the variable is inside the trig function, that's when you do the inverse trig function. So we would say x is equal to the inverse tangent of 15 over 4. And then that is something you can put in your calculator as well. So we will go inverse tangent of 15 over 4. 
So that's 75.069 got to round up. So that's going to be A again. Okay, number seven. Label the side lengths of the triangle to show that tangent E is equal to five over 14. So again, they mention angle E. Um, so guys, notice they are not asking me to find angle E. When we had our last quiz, I had so many students trying to find angle E and they'd have E equals and they'd be doing um, the inverse tangent of 5 over 14 and they were giving me angle E. You are not being asked to solve for angle E. Okay, so don't do not do that. Um, but anyway, so we we're, we are talking about angle E. So let's circle that. So if this is angle E, um, now we can label the side. So this is the hypotenuse. Okay, across from angle E is going to be the opposite leg. Right next to angle E is going to be the adjacent leg. Okay, great. Now, tangent, uh, you know, the definition of tangent we abbreviate as TOA to remind us that it's opposite over adjacent. So that means that this is the opposite leg and this is the adjacent leg. All right, so that means the opposite leg must be 5 and the adjacent leg must be 14. Okay, so there we've labeled the side lengths, all right? That's the first part is over. Now, now they're asking us to find and label the third side of the triangle. So many students try to find the third side, you know, the hypotenuse, by doing one of these, you know, by doing uh, Sokotoa. Um, that's not what you, what you want to do. In addition to all of this sine, cosine, and tangent business that you've now learned, there's an older theorem that you knew before all this, and it is called the Pythagorean theorem. All right, the Pythagorean theorem. That is what you want to use if you're given two sides of a right triangle and you're being asked to find the third side. You do not use sine, cosine, or tangent in this situation. So I'm going to call this x. All right, and the Pythagorean theorem would say um, leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So that's going to be 14 squared plus 5 squared is equal to x squared. Um, so this is 196 plus 25 is equal to x squared. That's 221 is equal to x squared. And then if we take the square root of both sides, okay, um, when this happens, hit the toggle key here to force the decimal. So that's 14.866. All right, so that is the third side. So we're supposed to label it, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on the hypotenuse where it belongs. All right, number eight, find the side length marked x. Well, this is a straight Sokotoa problem. So uh, we will circle the angle and label the sides. So there's the angle. This is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle is the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. All right.
right? Now we choose which function we're going to use. Which one of these sides is not helping us, not doing anything? The adjacent leg, um, we're not given a value, and it's not one of the things that we're looking for. So that's useless. Um, the cosine function and the tangent function both involve adjacent. So we will not be using that. So that leaves sine. So we say sine of the angle that we circled is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 10 over x. When the variable is in the denominator, that's when you swap these. So that's going to give you x is equal to 10 over sine 53. And then you just put that in your calculator. So that's 12.521. All right, number nine, another Sokotoa problem. So we circle the angle and label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle is the opposite leg right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. Now we choose which one of these sides is doing nothing. The opposite leg is doing nothing. Sine and tangent involve the opposite leg, so we throw those out. That leaves cosine. So we say cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be x over 15. When the variable is in the numerator, that's when you multiply both sides by the denominator. All right, that way these cancel out. And then you can put this in your calculator. So that's 11.147. OK, number 10. Again, Sokotoa. So circle the angle, label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle is the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. Now we choose which one of these three sides is not doing anything. The hypotenuse is not doing anything. It's, we're not given a value here, and it's not a variable that we're looking for. Um, sine and cosine both involve the hypotenuse. So we're going to throw those out. That leaves tangent, so we will write tangent of the angle that we circled, which is x, is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be 11 over 15. When the variable is inside the trig function, that's when we do the inverse trig function. So x is equal to the inverse tangent of 11 over 15 and you just put that in your calculator. All right, inverse tangent 11 over 15. 36.254 got around up. 36.254 Okay, the next three questions all pertain to this picture. So my strategy will be, I will do one problem at a time, and then I will erase and start over. Um, just put an X next to whatever they are asking you to find. So, um, for problem number 11, we are to find the length of side ML. So here's side ML, so I'm going to put an X on that to show that that's what we are looking for. Now, this 
again, this is not a Sokotoa problem. We are given two sides, and we are looking for the third side. This is all sides, right? No angle is involved in this problem. Um, so it cannot be a Sokotoa problem, all right? When we do Sokotoa, every single formula involves an angle, right? See this theta? That's an angle. Angle, angle, angle. So if you have a problem that is all sides, you have to use something else. And the something else that we use is called the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, so we're doing leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so that's going to be x squared plus 17 squared is equal to 21 squared. Just be careful to make sure your hypotenuse is over here by itself. So that's going to be x squared plus 289 is equal to whatever 21 squared is. I'm not sure. I don't know. 441. 441. So then you have to subtract 289 from both sides. So that's going to give you x squared equals, all right, so minus 289, 152. All right, then you have to take the square root of both sides. back to the calculator. Okay, when this happens, and they're asking you for a decimal, hit this toggle key right here, and it gives you the decimal. So 12.329, got to round up, 12.329. Okay, so for number 12, we are being asked to find the measure of angle K. All right, so I'm going to erase the X that I just put, and uh, I'll put it somewhere else. So this time, we're supposed to find the measure of angle K. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and call this X because that's angle K. Um, notice we have an angle now. So now we can do... Um, tangent sine and cosine. Okay, tangent sine and cosine, Sokotoa, always involves two sides and an angle. Two sides and an angle. So anytime you see two sides and an angle, then you can use Sokotoa. And here I have two sides and an angle, so let's go. So we will use our normal strategy we will circle the angle and label the sides. So this is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle that we circled is the opposite side. Right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. And then it's time to choose. So, so ka toa All right, we choose by saying which one of these sides is not doing anything. The opposite side is not, uh, we're, it's not a number, and it's not a variable that we're looking for. Sine and tangent both involve the opposite leg. So we're going to throw those out and use cosine. So um, cosine of the angle that you circled, which is x, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, so that's 17 over 21. When the variable is inside the trig function, you do the inverse trig function. So that's going to be inverse cosine of 17 over 21. And then you just put that in your calculator. Inverse cosine of 17 over 21. That's 35.951.
got to round up if the next number is 5 or higher. So 35.951. And that's it. So now I'm going to go back and uh, erase everything I just did and start over. All right? That's what you do when they give you one picture and they give you several problems based on that picture. So for problem number 13, now we're supposed to find the measure of angle M. Okay, so the measure of angle M so M is right here so now that's my X I still have two sides and an angle so this is still a Sokotoa problem so I'm gonna do what we do so I'm gonna circle the angle and label the sides so this is the hypotenuse across from the angle this is the opposite leg right next to the angle is the adjacent leg so now I have to choose. Which one of these sides is not doing anything? All right, the adjacent leg is doing nothing. It's not a number given, and it's not one of the things we're looking for. So cosine and tangent both involve adjacent. So I'm going to throw those out. That leaves sine. So I'm going to do sine of the angle that I circled, x, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 17 over 21. When you're looking for the uh, variable inside the trig function, this angle, um, that's when you do the inverse trig function. So we will do the inverse sine of 17 over 21. And then you just put that in your calculator inverse sine of 17 over 21. Okay, so that's 54.049. And that is it. Now, notice Angle M and K are complementary angles, okay? M and K are both acute angles in the same right triangle. So I did not have to use another trig function to find angle M. I could have just subtracted from 90 to find it, since I already had K. Okay, so uh, in problem number 12, I found that this was ang the measure of angle K. So if I really trusted my answer to number 12, um, then to find angle M, then uh, the measure of angle M is just going to be 90 minus the 35.951. And oh look, that's 54. 54.049. Okay, that's exactly the same thing we got by doing the sine function. So this would have been quicker. The reason why I always do it this way, uh, by doing the sine function or you know whatever the trig function is all over again, is because uh, a lot of kids got number 12 wrong. And uh, if you got number 12 wrong and then you use that value and subtract from 90 to do number 13, now guess what? You just got two problems wrong instead of just one. So um, if you do it over again from scratch, then uh, you have another chance to get the problem right. But um, I would be irresponsible if I didn't point out that you could find it by subtracting the first angle from 90. Okay, last problem. When you have two triangles stuck together like this, your strategy should be to draw the triangles separately and solve them one at a time. So the triangle on the left is like this, where this is 34, and this is 59, and this is x.
Okay, that's the triangle on the left. Um, now, here's the triangle on the right. Where this is X and uh, this is Y and this is 63. Now, only one of these can I solve right now. Um, the triangle on the right has too many variables. All right, I need two numbers given and one unknown. I can solve this triangle. Over here, I only have one number given. That's not enough. Um, so you have to start with the triangle on the left and solve that. Um, here I have two sides and an angle. Um, that is a Sokotoa problem. All right, if I had all three sides, that would be a Pythagorean theorem problem. So um, this is Sokotoa, so I'm going to circle the angle and label the sides. So this is the hypotenuse, and uh, this is, uh, well, across from the angle that I circled is going to be the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is going to be the adjacent leg. Okay, so now I'm thinking, what about Sokotoa? I have to decide, have to choose. Which one of these sides is not doing anything? The opposite leg is doing nothing. It's not given. It's not a variable that we are looking for. Sine and tangent involve opposite. So I'm going to throw those out and use cosine. So I will say cosine of the angle I circled is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be x over 34. When the variable is on the numerator, that's when you multiply both sides by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 34. So these will cancel each other out. And uh, this is something that I can put in my calculator. All right, so that's 34 cosine 59. 17.511 okay so that is the value of X so I can go ahead and put that down alright now I can solve the right triangle well the triangle on the right they're both right triangles um, but it's because now I know the value of, angle, of side x. So um, I can use that. So right here where, it's, where it says x, I'm going to erase that. And I, I'm going to put in the value that I now know. So this is 17.511. Now I have two sides and an angle where there's only one variable. So I can, uh, I can do Sokotoa now. So I will circle the angle and label the sides. This is the hypotenuse. Across from the angle is the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. OK, and again, I contemplate Sokotoa. I must choose which function to use. And the way I choose is I ask myself which one of these sides is not doing anything. The adjacent leg is doing nothing. Cosine involves uh, adjacent and so does tangent. So I'm going to throw those out. That leaves me using the sine function. So I write sine of the angle that I circled is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. When the variable is in the denominator, this is when you swap these. So I will have y is equal to 17.511 over sine 63. And this is something you put in your calculator.
So let's see, 17.511 over sine 63. So that's 19.653. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.